Okay, so what I just want to talk to you about is a development um, that I've uh, been involved with um, where actually health and well-being was at the core of what we were trying to achieve. And um, when I started on this project, I had one concept in my mind and I wanted to explore whether I could ask a doctor if he could prescribe my mot. Okay? And my mot in question is Peel Hill Mot. It is in the village um, of Thorne, near Doncaster. Um, Thorne is one of those classic medieval towns, church, castle, brilliant high street. You can see all medieval burgage plots. It's got just absolutely cracking structure to it. Okay, and here is our modern Bay castle, here's our church, and there's our village. You'll all recognise this stuff, absolutely, absolutely brilliant. But also, it's got a 19th and 20th century history, which is coal mining. And if you know where that story leads you, this is a place of serious social deprivation. This is a town, a village that is failing, failing whole scale. Okay, the amount of antisocial behaviour that goes on on this beautiful scheduled monument is quite extraordinary. So, what was the solution to this um, particular site? And we're looking at the area in red. Well, of course, it was to build a supermarket on it, because that's what this town needed, okay, to revitalise it, a supermarket. Well, we disagreed. We thought that would be really bad for the setting of the monument, and potentially the archaeology of the monument. And so we resisted. And we resisted about three times a supermarket going on this site. Then, uh, about eight years ago, the local authority came to us with a completely different approach they said, what would you think if we wanted to build an extra care facility on this site? Now, they, the way they came to us was really interesting. They came from their housing department and they came from their local plans team. And they said, if you go with this, we could actually write a specific policy in the local plan to help do this. What would you like? And at that moment, that is when I thought of the idea, doctor, can you prescribe the mod? And what we meant by that was how might a development on this location knit part of this town back together again? What might it do for us? What might it do in addressing the antisocial behaviour, but also what might it do in revitalising the medieval town? Okay, a 72 unit health care facility will have 140 beds in it, will have extended families in visiting. Ooh, endless possibilities. So we said, okay, Let's think about it. Let's do it. You're going to have to do quite a lot of work, though, to actually understand what the impacts might be. So we did topographical surveys. <coughs> we made them do setting analysis to see how this might actually work. But we also started on this journey with them, talking about how might you design the MOT to become part of the, very, uh, the borrowed garden of the extra care facility. So I said, I don't want the extra care facility back yard facing onto the monument. I want it to be the focal point. I want everything to face towards it. So ultimately what they did is they created an L-shaped building where the main focal bit rooms, the restaurant, the public meeting areas, the activity room, all focus onto a terrace which then focuses out onto the scheduled monument. Um, we did the archaeological evaluation and when we did the archaeological evaluation we set up a project design and that project design was to see us right through from evaluation, we haven't said yes yet, but right through to archiving. And we set out a whole series of questions. And in that, we also set out what community activity, what other stuff we actually wanted to do with that. But we had some really, really important questions. Nobody actually knows where the outer bailey of this Motten Bailey castle is. So we set ourselves a whole load of questions. We don't know um, how the medieval burgess plots ended, what became of them. We set ourselves a whole series of questions. And the evaluations were really useful. We didn't find any outer bailey at this stage. Vanessa ruling it out, and we found medieval burgage plots changing into Victorian back of yards in light industrial activity. Pretty much stuff you'd find. No showstoppers, so we were happy to move on. We went to a design stage, and this is where we agreed to the most <coughs> significant impact. Okay? Doctor, can you prescribe the mod? What I was thinking there is there'll be a resident GP who will sit there, and twice a day I was thinking. Hmm, why doesn't he actually prescribe the residents walking around the mod? How might we do that? Well, you need an, uh, a level of access. How might we create that? We agreed to put a trench through what was supposed to be the outer defence of the Mott and Bailey Castle. This is that trench. 
And this is the only point where I nearly completely lost it, because I turned around the corner and saw just how big this trench became, and I thought, oh dear, what have I done on the Sheffield Monument? Um, it was a rather nerve-wracking moment. That's me in the bottom there. It was a seriously big trench. And I thought, God, that's a lot of archaeology, isn't it? Oops! Amazingly, it turns out that there was no medieval archaeology at all here, because this castle is built on a natural promontory. That is all natural, with the exception of the dark material at the very back, which is a Victorian duck pond. Because <laughs> this modern Bailey castle was made into a Victorian duck pond, so we learned a lot. And when we go back and look at all the geology, we look at all the topography maps, we can actually find exactly why this happens. It's on a gravel outcrop, and then we can absolutely categorically say that the Aka Bailey never came over in this direction. So we learned loads, in a sense, from a negative trench. But it helped us facilitate where we were going. So at the same time as doing all that, we were really clear that we wanted the people of Thorn to experience this. So all the archaeology was done openly. There were open days. There were a whole series of questions that we set out right from the beginning. We said, I don't think we're going to put much in the museum here. What else are we going to do with it? Okay, We're going to do other things. We want to use material for other, other reasons, and I'll come on to those at the end. But we set this out, and this is in, this is in the written scheme of investigation. Okay, this is what we set out. Again, supported through the local plan, through the planning application, through the written scheme of investigation. The fines were pretty uh, uh, standard for what you'd expect for this. A bit of medieval, but mainly um, Victorian material. Okay, but really interesting in how well they survive and the durability of those. Those are really important because what we've actually asked for is a teaching collection for the secondary school, which also deals with um, geomorphology and topography and how settlements change, a teaching collection for the local primary school, but also a dementia collection for the actual care facility. So we're going to think about lots of things to do when you go in there. And one of them is dead simple. Okay, They uncovered a huge yard surface and they took a brilliant um, photograph of it. Okay, And that's just going, we're going to make that into a jigsaw. And that's all you've got to do, because it's going to be in the day room of the care facility, and it's going to be something activity that people can do. Because that was the floor that was underneath where they were actually sitting. Um, we also um, it's monitored how all this activity was actually happening, and what it went to, and what those outreach objectives were. And what was absolutely brilliant is we had an open evening. Okay, and we went, and I agreed to go, and the archaeological unit, Arc Heritage, they were there, and the consultants. But the care providers came. And do you know what? They sold four of the units to residents of four. Okay, so these places where when you're over 50, you can go and live in. They actually sold four of them. The place hadn't even been built by that stage. And suddenly the developer thought, oh, you're quite interesting. You're, you're, you're selling us now. <laughs> there's a Facebook page uh, and there's Twitter feed. Amazingly, we haven't done any archaeology for two years. This gets about 200 hits every time Dave Kenny actually links something to it. It's still live and still active. People are really, really interested about what this means as a place. And here it is. Okay, so the photo montage at the top, but when you come down, you look at the bottom. Here's the garden. There's my horrid massive trench. It's now actually a night park. You can walk through there and you can experience the lot. And we have various different grades of paths you can go around. There's a completely flat one you can go around with a wheelchair. There's one that's slightly uphill that you can go up and be a little bit more um, able. And then if you're really, really, really able, you can go back up to the top of the mock mart. But that photograph there is taken from one of the residents' windows. Because the whole point here is this is their place. This is where they're going to live. And this is a lovely thing to look at. And it's all about that. So the entire concept of this scheme was entirely about improving people's lives. And it was simple. This was not about being precious to this monument. This monument didn't need that. This monument needed us to engage it. It needed to be part of this town and part of this settlement. So where are we? They are about a week away from actually accepting their first residence. They're going to be moving in. We're working now with the actual archive to create these teaching resources and to create the on-site interpretation and then hopefully um, that landscape picture was taken about two months ago when we go back in the summer it will be transformed even more in, into something else and as simple as that doctor can you prescribe the mod well i hope you all agree yes you can mm -hmm.